Brought to you by Beautiful Hair Breck. The three Breck shampoos. Breck Hair Set Mist. Breck Vanish Dandruff Treatment Shampoo and other fine preparations for the care of the hair. And now, our host, Ruol Dahl. How are you? And how is your love life these days, you ladies? Because whatever happens, you should always try to remember that men are not nearly so preoccupied with the opposite sex as most women would like to think. Above all, you see, man is a colossal egotist, far more concerned with his own self than he is with females. And that, quite obviously, is why women are always having to doll themselves up to attract his attention. To me, the behavior of the male human is very much like that of the male frog. The frog, whenever he feels a trifle amorous, calls to his female by blowing out his dewlap and letting it go with a burp. The female comes hoppity hop hop over to his side and waits eagerly. But by then, the male has become so engrossed with the business of blowing his horn he's forgotten all about her, and she actually has to nudge him several times before he turns to embrace her. That's what happens with frogs, but you see what I mean, don't you? Our play, strange enough, is called The Croaker by Phil Reisman, Jr. And it is, of course, way out. A portrait of loveliness. A portrait of a lovely woman. A lovely woman with beautiful hair. Beautiful hair, Breck. To bring out the natural beauty of your hair, select one of the three Breck shampoos. The one especially formulated for your hair condition. Breck shampoo for dry hair. To give it softness, manageability, and luster. To make dry hair beautiful. Breck shampoo for oily hair. To give it life sparkle to make oily hair beautiful. Breck shampoo for normal hair to bring out its natural loveliness to make normal hair beautiful. There are three Breck shampoos. One is specially formulated for your individual hair condition. To make your hair beautiful, beautiful hair Breck. What are you doing in my house, boy? Who are you? My name is Jeremy Keeler, and I'm looking for Spot. He's a dog. You're Mr. Runner, aren't you? How'd you know my name? Easy. Last week when he moved in, some of your junk had your name on the boxes. Oh, I see. You always go breaking into people's houses without knocking? Sure. Otherwise, nobody'd let me in. People don't like me much. Where'd you put the dog? Boy, what makes you think I've got your dog? It's not my dog. It belongs to the Tenches. Those crabby people next door. I saw it come into your yard after I let it loose. Oh, you let it loose, did you? Sure, that's what I do. I sneak into people's houses, and then I let their pets out. Canaries, parakeets, dogs, kind of like that. And then I go and bring them back, and they give me a reward. Where'd you put the dog? I assure you I have no knowledge of the beast. But I must say your vocation hints strongly of extortion. Still, one must not discourage little boys if they have any initiative whatsoever. I imagine your work is very fatiguing, eh? A nice cold glass of water would be the thing. Very, very refreshing, eh? No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. Nonsense. Little boys are always thirsty. This water smells stinky. Like an old pond. Like a frog's been in it. Indeed. And don't you like frogs, boy? Oh, sort of. Where'd you put Spot? I tell you, I don't have your dog. I've never seen him. What's my little... 
Boy, 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 boy. Say, have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed how a certain species of frogs has a barking sound just like a dog, eh? Huh? Well, that's a piece of nature law for you. Yes, you've discovered my little secret, boy. I'm a frog fancier. And we'll keep that just between the two of us, eh? Oh. Uh -huh. 25 cents, eh? Boy, how would you like to have steady employment, eh? Sure. What do I do? Catch flies. Yes, you see, my little frog friends are always hungry. And your community is a little cleaner than I thought. Our insects are at a premium here. So for every f jar of flies you bring me, I'll pay you a, a quarter, huh? I don't know. I don't, I'm... No, 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 no. You could go around knocking over garbage cans and spreading things around a bit. That would create just the right atmosphere for flies. Yeah. I could grow my own flies in people's yards. And then I could charge to get rid of them. And Mr. Rana would pay you for them. In that way, you'd be paid twice. Doesn't that appeal to you? It's a deal. Twenty-five cents for each jar of flies. Fat ones, mind you. Yeah, so we, we understand each other, eh? We have our little secret, you and I. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come here, boy. Let me show you something. Do you see that little tadpole there, that one? That was once a little boy that tried to betray me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You miserable cur. I'm coming. I'm coming. Quiet down. Quiet down. I'll bring you something to eat. Why am I coming? I hear you. I hear you. I'm coming. I'll bring you something. I'll bring you your last Gee, dog, I have looked everywhere, and I just can't find him. He must have gotten out when Good. you went up. Good. That'll cut the yapping in half. Well, don't just sit there, Fred. Go look for him. After all, he's your dog. What do you mean, my dog? I only bought the mutt so you two could bark at each other and leave me in peace. Very funny. My dog. Not after you trained him to growl every time I came near him. He's got your disposition, Cora. He's your dog. You look alike, too. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's typically gracious of you. You big slob. If that dog growls at you, it's because he detects the treachery in your miserable soul. Oh, 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 oh. Who was it that trained him to go into my closet and chew up my shoes? Well, that little trick is costing you plenty. You never even wore shoes till we were married. Fourteen dollars. That's what it cost you to replace every pair. Fourteen dollars? That's right. That settles it, Cora. Your next pair is going to be made out of dog skin, and I know just the dog. Maybe you'd better find him first. I know where he is. Jeremy Keeler, how many times have I told you not to come sneaking into my house? Hello, Mr. Tench. Hello, Mrs. Tench. I told you I would call your mother the next Before time. Before you throw the kid out, Cora, he said he knows where the dog is. And you didn't yip so much. Listen, monster, I know your reputation. Tell me where Spot is and I won't ask any questions. Cost your quarter. The idea of charging a Cora, quarter to... Cora, I'd gladly pay to get him back. I want to train him to bite that big fat brother of yours. Ha, ha, ha. All right, where is he? Mr. Rana has him. Well, who's Mr. Rana? That new guy that moved in next door. You mean that funny man with the glasses? Sure, the one who raises frogs. Raises what? Frogs. He's got a zillion of them. Well, that's the end. Fred, you can march right down to the zoning board tomorrow and tell them there's a, a, a frog farm in our exclusive neighborhood. Oh, relax, will you, Cora? All right, you little squint, you've been paid. Now go on down to the depot and play on the tracks. Do you think that he really does have a... If he has got the dog, why don't you go over there and get it? Or are you afraid of frogs? Not since I met your mother. Hmm. You want the dog back, eh? Real bad? Yes, I'd like something intelligent to talk to. Then I'll just take my own sweet time and get me. Tent, your next door neighbor. 
I would have come over and introduced myself before this, but... Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Tench? Uh, Fred. Well, the, the thing is, our dog is missing, and my wife thought you might have seen him. He's about uh, so big, sickening yellow spots, shifty-eyed, slack-jawed, <laughs> doesn't answer to the name of Spot. As a matter of fact, he's a really horrible mutt. Well, I'm afraid I haven't seen your dog, Mr. Tench. If I do, I'll let you know. Oh, oh no, don't. My wife's been such a blister about this, I'd like to let her stew a little. Uh, I'd like to needle her, you know, give her that old zinger. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for a drink, Mr. Tench? Why, I say, that's right neighborly. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Whiskey all right, Mr. Tench? Oh, whiskey's fine, if you got it. Yes, I was hoping some of the neighbors would drop in. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of holding a little open house. Water, Mr. Tench. Oh, water? Yes. Fine. Oh, Fred. Yes, Fred, of course. Though I'm not a dog fancier, I am a nature lover. Though my interest is in creatures which are erroneously considered a little lower down in the animal kingdom. I'm very fond of frogs. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, what's the big feature with frogs? I mean, do you eat them? No, sir. No, Mr. Tench. I may be eccentric, but, sir, I am not depraved. No, sir. I admire frogs. Consider the serenity of a creature which spends half a year in hibernating in the mud and the other half relaxing on a sunny lily pad in quiet contemplation. No strife, no worries, no tension. <laughs> well, you sold me, pal. Uh, I wouldn't mind being a frog myself. <laughs> oh. What do you suppose the grown-ups in this town will think when you tell them? They won't believe me. Nobody believes me because I lie so much. Ah, that's right. Yes, you do. And you have been helpful. You bring food for my little friends. Mr. Rana, yeah. are you a frog? What's that? Are you a frog? Well, some of us are, and some of us aren't. Are you one? Listen, boy. When you grow up, if you grow up, you'll be exposed to all the idiotic theories of a monumental fraud called Darwin. According to him, what is called mankind he developed out of something like this. And then he said it evolved up through the jellyfish, the flatworms, the fishes, past the amphibia to the birds and the reptiles. Reptiles? You mean like snakes? They're cool. The greatest abomination on earth, boy. The mortal enemy of frogs, not even entitled to a place in evolution. Darwin was right. Darwin was right this far and no farther. Nature progressed up to the amphibia all right, but after that point it regressed. Cool. You understand all this? Of course. I thought you would. This was nature's zenith, her apotheosis. All things beyond the frog are just mutations of the frog. Look, look here. How can you improve on perfection? Uh, man is supposed to have exceeded that. Mankind has yet to attain that. Say, this mud is keen. And this is nothing, my little tadpole. When man has gotten through turning this world back into a bog, into the great big quiet mile it used to be, when the world is once more a swamp, then the creatures of the swamp will come into their own. And until that time comes, all we can do is serve them. Eh? Yeah, sure, Mr. Ronald. Serve them well, I say. That last jar of flies, you think we're fools that we can be cheated? I pay you for flies, fat ones. And what do I find? Every third one is a raisin. Off with you now, and fill up another jar. 
The penalty for counterfeiting flies is greater than you'll think. Ah, ah, been a time, the cat. Been a time. Yes, but there you are. Ready? That's ready. Ready? 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 Ah, there you are. There you are. Banished dandruff as you shampoo with regular use of new Breck Banish Dandruff Treatment Cream Shampoo in a new white unbreakable plastic tube. New Banish Cream is convenient, easy to use, works into a rich lather, goes to work instantly. The exclusive anti-dandruff ingredient in Banish, 22T4, penetrates to loosen and remove existing dandruff. And after you've shampooed, 22T4 continues to work invisibly to help prevent new dandruff from forming. Your hair looks and feels beautifully clean, soft, and manageable. Women and men who use Breck Banish as their regular shampoo enjoy lasting freedom from dandruff, wear dark clothes with confidence. So banish dandruff with new Breck Banish Cream or clear golden liquid. Breck Banish Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Check this description again, Mrs. Tench. Color yellow, eyes narrow and close together, weak chin, drools in the car. Well, that's the description of the missing dog. That's the description of both missing dogs, Sergeant. Look, all I know is that two nights ago, my idiot husband went next door to look for his idiot mutt, and I haven't seen hide nor hair of either of them since. Now, Mrs. Tench, there's no reason yet to get worried. Worried? Who's worried? I'm humiliated. How does it make me look when my husband just ups and walks out on me? If I'd seen this coming, I'd have done it to him. We've got a missing persons out in him, Mrs. Tench. Good. We've got nothing to go on. That weirdo next door was the last guy who saw him. Said he acted quite normal. Just a little horse in the throat, that's all. A frogginess. That comes from barking all the time. The dog? Fred. You say he didn't pack a bag. Now, we checked the railroad station, the bus depot, and the taxi companies. There's no withdrawal from your bank account. I should hope not. And we checked all the bars and taverns, the bottom of Mill Creek, the sand and gravel pit, and the homes of three ladies whose husbands travel extensively. Was he insured? You mean, did I do away with him? Not yet. Well, then, I didn't mean to suggest what we call domestic infelicity. But has he ever left home before? He wouldn't have dared. Well, we'll keep looking, Mrs. Tench, but I don't Sergeant, know. my husband couldn't have disappeared without a trace. He's too irritating. Huh? Like I say, we do the best we can. Hey, you, who lets you in? Hello, Sergeant McGugan. Hello, Mrs. Tench. The cellar window is open. I warned you before about sneaking into my house. Now, this man is a policeman. Yeah, we know all about him. Truancy, illegal entry, board of health violations. He breeds flies. Out! You're looking for Mr. Tench, aren't you? What about it? I know where he is. You do? Where is he? In the pond. In the... Was he floating? No, he was swimming. Swimming? And eating a dragonfly. Out! He was turned into a frog. Out, I said. He was. This piranha turned him into a big, green frog. I can hardly wait till you're 18. Sometimes you can hit him when they're 15. Sergeant, my husband can't swim. Well, we'll sure try, Mrs. Tench. We'll check the hospital again. Well, if you find him there, don't bother to bring him home, because he's going right back there. Oh, 
stench from next door. There, there is a frog, and I'm quite certain that he's yours. He's sitting in my husband's chair in my living room, making me the most disgusting, croaking noises. I insist you come and get that reptile or whatever he is right away. As a matter of fact, he's right behind you. Oh, 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 don't let him go back in my house. Please, don't let him go back. Oh, don't let him go back. Oh, don't let him go back. very soon now. Huh? Thank you. Mr. Rana, what was it that you called that frog just now? Oh, you mean Freddy? <laughs> oh, I have pet names for all my little friends. Not very really original, but euphonious. Freddy Frog, I call them. <laughs> there you are, my dear. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 I'm a naughty girl to be doing this. <laughs> oh. You'll find nothing more tranquilizing, Laura. Uh, very unusual place you have here. Hmm. Kind of like a hollow log. Mm -hmm. Oh, but comfortable, you know. Mossy. <coughs> oh, I beg your pardon. This room does need the woman's touch, though. <laughs> Alas, I'm still seeking a mate. Are you? I may be myself of that big lug of a hut. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I'm terribly sorry. <coughs> you know, if I was doing this room, I'd... I'd get rid of all this livestock. Oh, yes. I, I'd say, uh, dear, it's very cute of you to have a thing about frogs and minnows, but... Pollywogs. Oh, pollywogs. <coughs> <laughs> but we'll just move all these wiggles <laughs> and that dead fish. And we'll put him in the in the spare room, and that can be your den. <laughs> that is, <coughs> unless we need it for something else. <laughs> <coughs> it's not that I don't like frogs, you understand? Frogs are fine in the right place. It's just when you don't expect them like that one. Now, you must admit he is repulsive. Why, when I saw him sitting in my husband's chair, he looked just like... Oh, but... Oh. Oh. Do you know that there is a horrid little boy in this neighborhood? Oh, I must have been unstrung. But, but you know that he... He had just told me that you had transformed Fred into a... <laughs> oh, he did. Can you imagine? <laughs> With a wave of your magic wand. <laughs> I don't think you use those anymore. <laughs> oh, quite obsolete, quite obsolete, Cora. Nowadays, we would use a chemical decoction. Something colorless, tasteless, with perhaps just a faint odor of pond water, disguised in the heavier scent of, say, whiskey. <coughs>
And one for me. Now, ah, there you are. You've been a big disappointment to me, boy. Where have you been? Here I've had a hunt for my own flies. I've been working. And I promised to set you up with a lemonade stand down by the station so that we could catch the thirsty commuters when they get off the train. You've let me down, boy. I've gone in business for myself. I've got my own lemonade stand. You what? You know what you've been doing to people? Well, I found out I could do it too. Impossible. You don't even know the formula. I found a better one. I've been studying. Mr. Rama, you were wrong. Wrong about what? About Mr. Darwin and frogs. You said they were as far as nature went and stuff. Only I thought you were wrong, and you were. Oh? And how far did nature progress? Oh, up to the reptiles, you know. Snakes. Snakes! Uh-huh. Oh, uh, you remember Sergeant McGugan, the cop? Yeah. He stopped at my lemonade stand, and I gave him a drink. One of my drinks. You'll like it here, Sergeant McGugan. As a matter of fact, when the whole world turns back into a great big jungle and the snakes take over again, you'll all have plenty to eat on account of there'll be so many frogs. happier than people? This is the question posed by the play you've just seen, and it's a difficult one to answer. But several good friends of mine, all of them frogs, have told me that the price of people's legs in the better frog restaurants is ridiculously high at the moment. And this, for one thing, is causing much unhappiness. We'll have another story for you next week at the same time. Good night, and sleep well. Start fresh with L and M. Stay fresh with L and M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L and M. The touch of a light to an L and M. You unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Do away with dried out taste for good. The secret flavor seal. L&M's special way of moisturizing tobacco, the seal-in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. L&M burns slower, smokes cooler. And L&M's modern miracle tip means you get the cleanest, freshest taste possible. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. Fresh tasting, best tasting L&M in pack or box. This is Rod Serling, your guide for a unique odyssey in the Twilight Zone, next on most of these stations. Makeup by Dick Smith. Hairstyle by Ernest Adler. <laughs> This program was pre-recorded. Paul remains speaking. Beautiful hair, Breck. Three Breck shampoos. Breck hair set mist. Breck Danish dandruff treatment shampoo and other fine preparations for the care of the hair. Way out.